ओके सो मेनी मेंबर्स ऑन द चैनल है वास रिगार्डिंग द रिवेस्कुलाइशन टाइमिंग्स एंड विंडो पीरियड इन एक्यूट कोर्नी सिंड्रोम्स बाय रिवेस्कुलाइशन टाइमिंग मींस रिवेस्कुलाइशन मींस आइदर वी आर थ्रोम्बोलाइजिंग द पेशेंट और वी आर डूइंग ए पीसीआई परक्यूटिनस कोर्नी इंटरवेंशन लाइक एंजियोग्राफी एंड एंजियोप्लास्टी सो आई विल ट्राई टू सिंपलीफाई इट फॉर यू सो सपोज अ पेशेंट स्टार्ट्स Uh, having uh, chest pain so sub, the patient starts having heaviness or starts having chest pain symptoms so these will be this time will be known as onset of symptoms so from onset of symptom up to 12 hours this patient or uh, this patient needs to be revascularized or we should uh, we should say this patient should be revascularized within 12 hours so 12 hours from the onset of symptom is the window period now what will happen the patient will having chest pain and this patient reaches to a medical center for help medical help now this uh, when this reaches to a medical center or hospital within 10 minutes the hospital or the center should identify that this patient is having acute coronary syndrome st segment elevation mi so do uh, and they should always they will take ecg also so door to ecg time should be less than 10 minutes now once they have established that this patient is having acute coronary syndrome or st segment elevation mi so they will provide abc airway breathing circulation antiplatelets anticoagulants but the primary therapy in st segment elevation mi is the revascularization therapy we need to open the culprit vessels so how it will get open either we'll thrombolyze the patient or we'll do a percutaneous coronary intervention which is angiography angioplasty so now this suppose this center on which the patient has reached has a facility to do um, pci so there is a cath lab so this they will shift the patient to the cath lab there the patient will go under angiography the culprit vessel will be identified and then they will insert a stent and they will inflate the balloon after inflation of the balloon the perfusion to the uh, myocardium is restored so door to balloon time should be less than 90 minutes that means when a patient reaches a medical center which is a cath lab facility available within 10 minutes the patient should be identified as having acs and stemi and within 90 minutes this patient should be in cath lab and angiography should be done and the stent should be inserted and the balloon should be inflated so revascularization has been achieved so door to balloon time should be less than 90 minutes now suppose the medical center which the patient has reached doesn't have a uh, percutaneous coronary intervention facility so they decide that after stabilizing they will shift the patient to a center where the pci facility is available so uh, if the time for the patient to reach the particular center is less than 120 minutes means the patient will reach that center or hospital where a angiography or angioplasty can be done is within 2 hours and the patient will reach to that center within 2 hours so they should refer or uh, the, they will refer the patient to that center so that there the angiography and angioplasty can be done so within 2 uh, hours if, or within 120 minutes if the patient can reach to a center uh, that center they will refer to a, uh, that center but suppose uh, the time for to reach that particular center where the angiography or plasty or cath lab facility is available is going beyond 2 hours the patient will not reach uh, there within 2 hours or 120 minutes it will take more time so the, what they will do they will thrombolyze the patient at their centers they don't have a cath lab they can't refer the patient will not reach within 2 hours so they will decide to thrombolyze that patient at their own center by streptokinase or any other uh, fibrin specific agents so how they will thrombolyze via iv cannula they will start the medication so then door to needle time means the start of thrombolysis door to needle time should be less than 30 minutes so a patient having chest pain reaches to a medical center identifies within 10 minutes that they, there is no uh, th this patient is having acute coronary syndrome with st segment elevation mi they don't have a, a pci facility available neither they can refer to, to a center where pci facility is available because it will take more than 2 hours so they decide to thrombolyze the patient and then the start of thrombolysis should be less than uh, within 30 minutes so door to needle time should be less than 30 minutes so this is clear if they can refer and the patient can reach within 2 hours they should refer or they can refer depending upon the situation now once you have done the revascularization you should re repeat after thrombolysis the ecg should be repeated after 60 to 90 minutes now once you have uh, done the thrombolysis and post 60 to 90 minutes uh, you take an ecg and you see 
that the primary ST segmental vision, the initial ECG in which the ST segment were elevated and in the ECG post thrombolysis, you compare that ECG with the post thrombolysis uh, ECG after 60 to 90 minutes, the ST segment elevation has come down to more less than 50 percent, means suppose there were 10 boxes elevation was there and now it is less than 5. So it was a successful thrombolysis. Also, if the patient will become pain free. But if the ST segment elevations has not come down or the patient has still having ongoing pain, that means the thrombolytic agent has not worked properly and this patient needs urgent PCI. Now this patient needs to be taken to the cath lab anyway because thrombolysis has not worked up to the mark. So now you can refer this patient or if the facility is available. Uh, it, it should be taken to the cath lab. So this time it will be called as rescue PCI. While the primary PCI initially which the patient was taken in acute coronary syndrome for the cath lab primarily directly it is called primary PCI. But if, if it is taken post thrombolysis where the thrombolysis fail it will be called as rescue PCI that can be taken. Also it should be remembered that though we have uh, said that the window period is 12 hour from the onset of symptom. At times on case to case basis this can be increased also suppose the patient is having ongoing chest pain still the patient is deteriorating then on case to case basis cardiologist and the team can decide that this can be taken now uh, for PCI. So I hope uh, this clarifies uh, in a simple manner do read more about it and if you have any question do ask in the comments thank you.